Hello, okay. I said I would make a tutorial on how to build one of these motors <clears throat> to help someone try to duplicate it. Um, my phone, the only camera that really works that, that isn't all scratched up is the front, so it makes it challenging because I never know if I'm actually pointing at uh, what I'm showing. But I thought I would, uh, I could have wrote it down, but I thought it would be just as easy just to show you what I got. This is a this is the contact. Okay, let's see here. Okay, this is the contact for the right side. This is the contact for the left side. They're both hooked up to the positive wire or the negative wire. And the way it is is when I have a piece of brass on a tube right here. Okay, you can see it here. Da -da -da -da. And you know, the tube, I'll push it in, <clears throat> but that piece of brass, when it comes across these two contacts, will complete the connection. So it's basically the same thing as having just one negative wire uh, connected to the coil. And then this switch uh, just completes the circuit. That's all it is. And like I said, both of these are connected to the negative uh, so one negative goes to the top coil on this switch here the negative on switch on the left side goes to the bottom coil so that's that's how it is and uh, let me turn this around I had to take it apart to clean up the contacts so I thought I would just Show you this. So let me uh, put the phone in something that'll hold it, and I'll put this together real quick. And then we'll try an experiment. Because this battery here, I'm showing it, is pretty well dead. I couldn't find the batteries that I was using. They kind of got lost. And I haven't used this motor or did anything with it uh, since shortly after I made the last video. And uh, I'm going to show you something real quick. This right here, if you can see it. Okay. <clears throat> this is a motor I made and worked really, really well. It would run on uh, a volt and a half, uh, half dead C cell battery or D cell battery. <clears throat> and it would produce a lot more back EMF. The problem was it produced so much it knocked out my internet. So I took it to a friend of mine. <clears throat> that's into this kind of stuff too and uh, we tried it in his building and it knocked out his security system so uh, it wasn't really feasible to run it but it run really well and you know unless I could figure out a way to make some kind of filter to filter the uh, back EMF and uh, it's only got one magnet on it right now because uh, I used the other magnet for something else but it makes it real convenient because you don't have to glue the magnets on it. It's got a real heavy-duty metal uh, ring that you just slap the magnets on, which is the same thing with this one. And uh, so let me put this here. Okay. <clears throat> so what I did, this right here is my, this rubber band. My hand's in the way. This rubber band right here is what gives tension to the switch pull it down on the contact so what I'll do is I'll push the contact in I gotta make sure that the magnets are horizontal and then the switch is straight up and I push it in and, and these contacts all I did is I took some plastic and uh, and just just cut it out drilled a hole in it drilled a couple holes in it so I could put uh, the, the uh, copper wire through uh, brass one or copper wire and then soldered some ends on it <clears throat> so you can look at this switch as these two wires are complete all I did was cut the wire soldered those two on and then when it makes contact up here it completes the wire that's all the switch is so and if I oversimplify this I apologize I just I'm a layman's term kind of guy because that's the way I understand the best so just put this switch okay so now okay now i got a little nut here 
that I just put on to keep it from coming off. And don't tighten the nut down because then it won't move. <clears throat> so I have to leave it kind of loose. So, so that one's on. But you have to make sure that now that one there is not touching. So I have to bend. I'll bend this one up just a little bit. Because we got to make sure they both touch at the same time. That and you got to make sure that this rubber band is going to give enough tension. Okay. Hmm. Still not too too good. Okay. So just getting them adjusted is the fun part. That's good. Okay. So now I turn it around. Do the other side. In. Stick the contact through it. I'll keep my hands out of the way. And uh, put it. Of course, I'll do the same thing here. I'll <coughs> see. This is right here. Okay. Make sure the magnets are horizontal. Push this right in. In the tube, I just cut the. It's a smaller tube, and I just cut it so it fits on. Not real tight, but tight enough that it doesn't move while it's running. And then I can adjust it real easy. So I'm going to put this. Where's the hole? There's the hole. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, i got to learn how to be some kind of a YouTube creator so that I can edit it videos and, and uh, add videos together so I can take like two days worth of work and and put it in a short video. <clears throat> okay, now put the. Let's see if this makes contact. And that one's not quite so. Back down a little bit. <clears throat> okay, that feels like it's making contact. <clears throat> okay. Put the nut on it. Okay, so now we got the switching hooked up. So I'll just leave it like this. We'll hook up the, the I got two I got a long wire and a short wire on the positive and a long wire and short wire on the negative. So we'll hook up the positive first. And I'll hook up the meter so you can see that the tractor battery has no juice in it. It's pretty well dead. And then we'll hook up the Negative. <clears throat> okay. Now I'll put this so you can read it, hopefully. Okay, let's see if we get that in there. Okay, there's the meter. So when it makes contact, okay, see it runs it down, it's zero. And that one's making contact. And this one is not making real good contact. Okay. okay. Oops. All right. So one's making better contact than the other. Uh, maybe I just need more tension. Makes just a little bit of contact when it quits. But, you know, it should be enough to run. Okay. So, you can see with the battery <clears throat> by itself, it's not going to do anything. <clears throat> and I already know that when I hook up the capacitor, I'll turn this over to the capacitor. When I hook up, when I hook up the capacitor, it's not going to run either. Because it doesn't have enough current in the battery to even charge a capacitor. I'll have to hook a 9 volt smoke alarm battery to it uh, to give it just enough current which there's not much current in a smoke alarm battery. Okay, let's see here. Put this back here. 
Of course, if the wire's in the way, you can't see. So we'll put this in the front so we can see what the meter does. Because it'll probably act a little weird. Okay. So there it is with the capacitor. Okay, I think it wants to run this way. Pretty well dead. Okay, so what I'll do is hook up two more wires. Got two more wires I'll hook up to the negative, to the positive, then I'll hook it up to this smoke alarm battery. So let me set you back down here. Negative. <clears throat> then I'll hook up the positive. Okay. So now we're hooked up. And it's slowly charging the capacitor. It doesn't have much current in it. So it's going to take a minute. Okay, now i got it set on 200 volts. So right now it's 4 volts. So I'll start it up. Whoa. Okay, the 200 volts, it's actually back spiking more than 200. So I put it on 1,000 volts. Okay, so that's 117, 126, 140. So that's the back spikes. Now, I'm pretty sure that this tractor battery is probably shorted out internally. So I don't think that it's going to uh, come back. But I thought I would hook it up just to see. Okay, now I'm going to see if both cylinders are firing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up, let's see if I got you here. I'm going to pick up the switching, see if it keeps running. Okay, so this one's firing, or the other one's firing. So now we'll pick up the other one and see if it keeps running. Sweet, we got both cylinders firing. Okay, so I'll take you, put you right back here when you see the meter. Now that's, uh, that's between 100 and 200 volts, 180, 200, so that's the back spike, that's, that, at least that's what the meter's showing. Now we got to remember this is two different energies, and the voltage that is around us has no current, but when you get enough voltage, it doesn't take much current. I mean, lightning strikes pretty quick. And my theory is that voltage is much, much, much faster than current. But when current is present, it totally stops uh, the voltage from going as fast as it wants to. But you still need a little bit of current. Like a smoke alarm battery I know is not new. So, it'll probably run dead, and I know that that tractor battery is, is not going to be any help. So, it'll probably stop running. And uh, when I used the D-cell batteries, they carried enough current that it would continually run. I don't think this is going to. I was hoping, but I'm going to put it back to 200 volts. Yeah, it's already... I could put it back to 20 Well, that's odd because at 20 volts, it's, it's, it's running and it's only like a half a volt. So this battery is pretty well. It's not even warm though. So. And it'll stop running here in a minute. Let's see if I can find another 9 volt battery. Yeah, the D-cell batteries worked a lot better. Let's see here. Yeah, I got a little 
Don't know how well this will work because I'm not sure what shape these batteries are in. But this was an experiment I did a while back. And I have these batteries laying around, so we'll see if it'll charge the capacitor a little better. Now, if they're totally dead, then it's not going to have enough current to charge the capacitor. And if they have too much juice in it, they'll burn up my contacts. But we'll see. Okay, it's they're pretty well dead. It's not charging it up very good. But it might be enough to run it for a little while. So. Nope. Okay. So they're pretty well dead too. So uh, you need you need a little bit of current. Uh, now I could charge these batteries up. I have a Bedini. Um, I'll bring it over here and show you real quick. <clears throat> but I've made other videos on this before. This is the Bedini I, I made. Let me put it right here. And this, the reason I'm throwing this in the video is because with this little this little guy, I can charge alkaline batteries. I haven't had to buy alkaline batteries in quite a while. So, I can just hook this up and charge a battery. Actually, I can hook this up, charge a capacitor, and run the Joseph Newman motor. Um, but anyway, that's not really what this video is about. This video is just about giving a tutorial on how to hopefully give you some insight on how this works uh, so that somebody can replicate it. Now, I'm sorry I didn't have the correct batteries, the ones I used last time. I probably should have hunted a little harder. But uh, yeah, D-cells batteries hold a little bit of current. Uh, pretty good. Just as long as they're not junk junk. So it keep running. It doesn't take much. But that was... I was pretty good with a 9 volt battery. I was getting spikes over 200 volts. Um, I wish I had another battery. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't. I could charge one, but then that would take too long. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. God bless, and uh, I hope this helps. If uh, if you have any more questions or comments or anything you want me to do, just uh, leave a comment, and I will try to do it. All right. Thanks a lot. God bless. Bye-bye.